Hello everyone, it's Professor Fiore, and in this video we are going to take a look at the post processor in Tina TI. This will allow us to create some very interesting plots, functions, things that we can't get directly from the normal simulations. So let's begin with a fairly simple circuit, just using a diode and a couple of resistors with an AC source. So the diode, of course, will only conduct current in one direction, right? In this particular orientation from left to right. So the input sine wave over here, 10 volts peak, will only conduct on the positive half. The negative half, this is going to open up and there'll be no current. So basically what we're going to get over here is a scaled positive half wave. There'll be a small voltage divider between R1 and R2. I have also inserted in here an ammeter so we can see what the current is along with the voltage across R2. Right now I'm particularly interested in R2. All right, so a standard transient analysis. I'm going to set this up for 0 to 30 milliseconds. Now at 100 hertz, that's going to give us three cycles. So we can see pretty well what's going on here. All right, so here is our... Uh, output scan, and I am going to change the colors on some of these things so they stand out a little bit more. Let's turn this into blue. All right, and get a legend over here. So we have the input signal, which is this sort of olive-ish green color, and that is the 10 volt peak, right? There's the 10 volt peak that we see, um, 100 hertz, so I got three cycles of that. And VA, the voltage uh, on the other side of the diode, in other words, essentially the voltage across R2, uh, is in blue. So that's doing pretty much what we expect. We're only getting a positive half wave. On the negative portion of the input, the diode is reverse biased, so we see nothing. We just see zero volts. And of course, that is scaled by this voltage divider, right? It's basically um, a 20 to 5 uh, ratio minus the 0.7 that we see on the diode itself. So, you know, that seems to be making sense. We're, it looks like we're getting around somewhere in the vicinity of, you know, seven and a half volts or so for a peak. So happy with that. And then finally, the current, which is a smaller scale here, but we can see that in the maroon, that's the current flowing through here, which should only be flowing, obviously, when there's a voltage. So this should be sort of a smaller version of what the blue is. Now we can zoom in on this by just adding a new Y axis. Move that legend over a little bit. So we now have a new axis over here for the current. So the output is out here, and then the AM1, the ammeter, right, is on this scale. So we can see there's the zero, and we see that thing just bopping up kind of as expected, okay? Just easier to see this way. You could zoom in, you know, using the uh, uh, magnifying glass kind of thing, but you don't have to. So I am going to delete that just to bring back what we had, just clean it up a little bit. All right, now, um, what if I want to find something that's sort of not directly discernible from, um, you know, like an ammeter, a voltmeter, something like that? So let's just say, for example, I want to find the voltage across a couple of things, right? Maybe the voltage from the input to RA. In other words, the voltage across this resistor and this diode. Now, there's a fairly straightforward technique to do this. You know, you could just grab a voltmeter from up here and just wire a voltmeter in. No biggie. Just like you wired in the uh, ammeter. But, you know, in big circuits, that gets kind of busy if you're constantly throwing in voltmeters. Um, a nicer thing, at least in my opinion, you know, everybody has their own preferences but you know for my opinion i like the little the little voltage uh, probe that you can just kind of put in various points because then th now granted those are all ground reference but then you can use the post processor to find some potentials in this case i'm not going to need it because i have v in over here and i'll show you that in just a sec so that's one thing you can do but you know there are some other things we might be interested in doing which I'll explain in, in, a, in another sec. So in any case, we're going to use the post processor here, and that's this 
button right here, the post processor. So you can just think of this as adding curves. All right. So I'm going to click on this and up opens a little dialogue. And immediately I'm going to say, click on this more button. And what we have over here is a series of uh, functions that have already been plotted. So we can see that we have the input voltage, we have VA, we have AM1, which is the ammeter. And what I can do is build an expression, right? And this line edit. So let's say that I want to find, um, like I said, the voltage across R1 plus the voltage across the diode. What does that look like? Well, using KVL, you would describe that as VN, right? This voltage minus VA, that voltage. That's the difference. So what I can do is just grab VN here, hit the little arrow that'll copy it down for me. Then I can select a function over here. I've got plus minus, you know, there's a bunch of things you can see, right? That's powers and so on. But I'm just going to grab a minus sign and that'll pop a minus sign in here. And I want to subtract VA. So let me select VA up here, put that down. Boom, there's my function. So it's VN of T minus VA of T. That's what the voltage across the resistor one and diode happens to be. So I'm going to give this a, a name, right? It just gives it the default name to begin with, you know, my function one. So let's just call this V, I'm just going to call it VRD for voltage resistor diode. How's that for an inventive name? So create that. And we now have that function VRD and I'm going to say, okay. So here it is, here's VRD. All right, now, um, again, because it just happens to be the same color, I'm going to come in here and change that color. Uh, what do you say? Let's try teal. All right, let me get rid of the old one here, and we'll get a new legend. So there's VRD, that sort of greenish teal color, right? That's the voltage across these two things, which makes perfect sense. You know, we've got a little bit on the forward bias of the diode. We've got this, you see this sort of little, um, I don't know what you want to call it, a little little offset here. That's due to the turn on of the diode. That's the 0.7 volts of the diode. Then this lump on the top part is essentially the other piece of the input voltage, right? We had the, the blue curve, VA, so this is the other piece of it. Um, and then when we go to the negative input, the diode is reverse biased, so all of the voltage drops across that because that just looks like a, an open, basically. And that's what we see coming down here, right? The teal is actually uh, perfectly overlaying the input signal. In fact, if you think of KVL, this voltage plus this voltage has to equal the input. In other words, the teal plus the blue should be 10 volts at the peak. So we can put a probe on here all right, I'm getting 7 point, almost 7.3 for that peak. And on this peak, we're getting just about 2.7. So 2.7, 7.3, there's your 10 volts, which is what the input is. All right. Okay, so, you know, that works all well. And this is a, a nice thing you can do with the post processor, just, you know, stick these little probes various places in the circuit and then you can just get any voltage you want by saying subtract one from the other or add one to the other or you know whatever it is that you're interested in okay but that by itself mm, you know it's great but there's more so let me open this back up and what i'm going to do is i'm going to get rid of vrd because this is going to get kind of uh busy all right, so I'm going to delete V of RD and notice back here, and I'll just move this out of the way in case you didn't see it, that function is gone. Now I want to build a new one. And the function that I want to build, matter of fact, let me get rid of that. The function that I want to build is I want to see what the power developed in R2 is. So how do I develop that equation? How do I compute that? Well, there's a couple different ways of doing it, right? Power can be described as voltage times current. It can be described as voltage squared divided by resistance, you know, current squared times resistance. So since I already have the current, AM1, and I have the voltage, VA, let me just do that. I'll just take VA, right, copy that down here, multiply, so, right, so select the multiply symbol, an asterisk, and then 
grab the current value, boom. Okay, so that combo, current times voltage, is the power developed in R2. So I'm going to give that a very inventive name called PR2 <laughs> and create that. All right, so here's my new function. Okay, boom, and there we go. All right, so you can see it's basically the blue times this small maroon. I'm going to have to change that color again. What do you want to change it to this time? Oh, how about gray? We'll be dull, dull, depressing gray. So the gray is the, is the maroon times the blue, right? It's the voltage times the current. And that's what we would expect to see. Down here, the current is zero. It doesn't matter if there's a voltage or not, right? The current's zero. So we get nothing for power. Now, if I wanted to know the true power dissipation of the resistor, what we would do is we would average this curve out over a full cycle. So the peak is coming up here, right? I have a peak up here, but that's not what I would need, what I would need for a rating, okay? So, you know, we can see the Y value is sitting out there at, you know, 2.66 something. But that's not the true rating because that has to get averaged out over a full cycle. It's really going to be down here somewhere. Right? This turns out, by the way, you know, you might think this is a, just half a sine wave. But if you look carefully at it, you can see how it's sort of flared here at the bottom. This is actually a sine squared function. Um, it's a shifted piece of a sine wave, all right? I mean, which makes sense because this is a sine and that's a sine. So this is a sine squared function, all right? There is a uh, trig identity for that, which involves a double frequency cosine. You might want to look that up. In any case, that's something that you'll see later on in uh, AC circuits if you haven't hit that already. Okay, so let's continue. I'm going to get rid of the PR2 function. Bunk, gone. And remember, there's multiple ways we can do this. It's not the case that I would have to have an ammeter. Um, we can do this as V squared divided by R. So I can say, you know, VA, right? Copy that down. And then I'm going to square it. So I can either, you know, multiply it by itself, VA of T times VA of T, or I can use this little caret symbol, which is the standard symbol for, uh, you know, raising something to the power. So raise that to the second power. And by the way, after a while, you know, you get used to what the syntax here is. You can just type this directly into the line editor. You don't have to manually select everything over here. So I'm going to do that right now, as a matter of fact. Um, the divide symbol is just a, a slash. So I'm just going to type a slash in here and then say, well, R2 is 20 ohms, All right? So that's going to be the squared. And it's going to do the square before it does the divide, standard sort of um, math hierarchy here. So that's VA squared divided by 20. And I'm going to call that P of R2 A. Oops, I didn't hit the, uh, there we go. P of R2 A to distinguish it from the original P R2. Create that. Okay. Bump. And look, it's the same curve, right? Which, you know, it should be, right? So there's multiple ways we can do this. As a matter of fact, right now you might be thinking, hmm, I'll never need an ammeter. As long as I know the voltage and there's a resistance, I can find the current through Ohm's law, right? I don't really need AM1. I could just say, well, it's, you know, VA divided by the value of R2, VA divided by 20. That's the current. Done. All right? So these are nice little things that you can do. You just think ahead a little bit. Once again, I'm going to delete that. All right. Um, you can, you can um, you know, think ahead a little bit, put down your appropriate you know, measurement pins, and then you can just go about your merry, merry, merry business. Now, one cool thing about this is if you do set this up and you start changing values, it'll automatically do the, the uh, plot that you've added, all right? So if I change some values in here, if I didn't delete that function, maybe I changed the value of R2 and I rerun the, uh, the simulation, it's going to give me that curve as well, okay? Beautiful. Now, moving along. Is that all you can do? I mean, let's face it. That's really quite useful. Doing what we just did, now I can find power. I can find all kinds of different voltages. I can find currents. Um, really, any, any sort of mathematical function 
that is supported, you can do. You can add offsets and do all kinds of crazy stuff. All right. So that's great, right? Beautiful, wonderful. That's only the beginning. Here's a nice, simple circuit, a voltage source, uh, a current uh, meter, an ammeter, and a diode. That's it. That's all I got. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little post processor XY mode action here. So, you know, if we just looked at um, a simple transient analysis, which I'm going to do right now, you know, what do you think we're going to get? All righty. So this is a small signal. It's only 750 millivolts. Now I've just plotted out one cycle for this. So this is the generator voltage, right? Coming up, vump, no biggie, All right? There's our 750 millivolts, right? There's 700 right here. So 750 is right there. That's our input. And the maroon plot is the current. So until the voltage gets high enough to turn on the diode, we don't really expect to see much current. I just have this little sort of lump where it's starting to turn on. Okay, beautiful. Again, if I want to, I can add a, a Y axis here and get a scale for that. And you can see, yeah, right when it gets there, you know, right when it gets up to like 700 millivolts, boom, this thing turns on and I get a nice spike out of it. All right, so that's my current scale. So we're getting up to 40 some odd milliamps. All right, all right. So let me uh, clean this up again. All right. Now, what does the current voltage characteristic of a resistor look like? If I was to plot, right, so I'm just going to kind of use this as my little drawing pad, so to speak. So here's zero coming across, and I'm going to use zero right here in the center so that this would be my first quadrant, second, third, fourth quadrant, and so forth. So if this would be, in other words, positive values for the voltage, positive value for the current, negative value for the voltage, negative value for the current. So I would expect for a resistor, if you have a positive input voltage, you're going to get a positive current, right? And we would just get a straight line here. Now, this is a, an early experiment you would do in DC circuits. The slope of this line would indicate what the resistance value is. Right? So a high resistance gives you a low current for a given voltage. So you would have something that's kind of flat. A low resistance, you get a lot of current, right? So you get a very steep line. And then if you flip the power supply, you know, that line extends out here into the third quadrant. So it would come out like this and then just continue right on here into the third quadrant. If it's, a, again, a lower resistance, you're going to get something steep here and steep here. If it's a, a large resistance, it's going to be kind of flat coming in like this. All right. What do we get for a diode? Well, a diode is a nonlinear device. Um, you know, the fact that that is a straight line is basically telling you that a resistor is linear. Diode is not. You know, we often refer to a diode as being a logarithmic device. So what would happen is, you know, current's negligible until we get near the knee, right, around 7 tenths, and then that voltage, um, we see the current just sort of take off right at that voltage, right? It's just very steep. And then when we go reverse, it just stays flat. There's no current unless we go really far out. If we go far enough out, we'll hit breakdown and, you know, the current will start to go. So that's what we have. Well, wouldn't it be nice if we could actually plot that? Well, guess what? We can. <laughs> so to do that, we go down here and grab XY plot. All right. So this has two slots now. The line edit sort of gets split in half, and one is for the X part and one is for the Y part. In other words, the horizontal and the vertical. So I want to plot the diode voltage, which happens to be Vgen, right? It's the only thing here. The generator voltage is right across the diode. So V diode is Vgen. So I'm going to grab that Vgen, copy that down into the X part. And then I'm going to come over here and select the Y part and grab up here AM, hit the copy arrow again. And there you go, right? So I'm going to plot those two things. What's a good name, right? How about if I just call it like diode XY? Okay. Or actually, let's call it what it really is. It's, it's a voltage times current. So I'll call it diode VI. All right. Create it. Boom. There it is in my list. And now I'm going to say, okay. And I get the curve. 
Notice this is a brand new. This is not tacked on top of the original. The original transient response is still over here. So it gives me a new tab, and here's my curve. This is what I would expect. Just so that you can see this a little better, all right, I'm going to grab a line up here. So here's the zero axis. And I am just going to draw a line down here. Oops. Okay, so, th so there's my first quadrant, right? I'm not going to draw a line here. Here's my zero. So I'm at zero and zero. So this is the first quadrant. So this is nice and flat. It's very, very, very tiny. We get up around uh, six, 700 millivolts, and boom, it starts to take off. All right, and here's the maximum current that we're getting for this particular circuit. When I look at the reverse bias, no current. And if we were to extend this further, like I said, this would just keep on going until eventually we hit the breakdown. Great. I actually can see what's going on here. I can see what this device is doing. So I'm not limited to a diode. I can use any kind of device in here and I can plot its current voltage characteristic. As a matter of fact, it's not even just devices, individual discrete devices. I can have entire systems. In other words, I can plot something like the output voltage of an amplifier versus its input voltage. And I can see what its linearity of, uh, what its linearity is. If it's not a perfectly straight line, then I know there's some distortion being created. If I see some kind of looping affair out here, right, that might indicate hysteresis in my circuit. Um, another thing we might do is create what are called Lissajou patterns, which we can use to measure phase shifts, measure relative uh, frequency ratios and things like this. Right? You are also not limited on here to this kind of graph. Let me get rid of that line. I have a linear axis over here, but, you know, um, Tina lets you adjust some of these characteristics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that into a logarithmic scale. And one milli is too small. So let's use, uh, let's say, 100 nano for my lower limit on this plot. Um, if this is logarithmic and I go to, well, this is actually exponential and in inverse logarithmic, but... If I change this axis to a log axis, I should get a straight line plot out of this thing. Hey, look at that. Okay, so you can see here's my logarithmic progression, right? Factors of 10, boom, 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 boom. And there's the nice straight line I get for that plot, which is what I would expect. Okay, down here, it's going to start to, uh, you know, if we went to a much, much lower current, we're going to start to seeing little aberrations and whatnot. But, you know, once we get fairly far up, nice straight line. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to where we were. And I can change my limits on here, you know, for whatever happens. I'll just use these for now, but, um, you know, you look at that and you're going, yeah, I'm not so keen. I'm not so keen on that. So, um, what do I want to do for the top end? Yeah, I don't know, maybe 50. That might be good. What do I want to do for the bottom end? I don't know, maybe negative 10 milli. Okay, something like that. There you go. Um, you know, you could start this out. You could start, do the same thing with this axis and just start it at zero. To, so you just see the forward bias of it instead of just having both of them. Entirely up to you. But this whole XY thing is extremely powerful. Um, in some upcoming videos, you're going to see usage of this to do some pretty bizarre things. Hey, how about plotting a load line for an amplifier with a, a reactive load? Did you ever wonder what that looks like? You know, we'll be able to do it. Okay, so post-processor, pretty handy little device. I, ex I would uh, just suggest that you take some of these circuits and just try working with it. See what you can get out of it. Get used to using it. It's a powerful tool. Okay, questions, put them down in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.